In the beginning, there was the Age of the Ancients, a land of everlasting great cracks, arch trees, and dragons. Then the first flame arose. Three beings found powerful Lord Souls within the flame. Gwyn found the Light Soul, Nido the Death Soul, and the Witch of Isolith the Life Soul. With that power, these lords planned to overthrow the dragons. However, there was a fourth Lord Soul found by a small, unassuming being called the Pygmy, who shared it with all his peers and humanity. This was the Dark Soul. The lords needed help fighting the dragons, so they struck a bargain with the pygmies and for their support in their fight, they would get their ring city and be made into lords themselves as well. So the lords enlisted the help of mankind, but they found out mankind drew their abyssal power directly from the dark soul, which frightened them. So the lords manipulated the power of the first flame and sealed mankind's power. However, while doing this, they bound the cursed men's existence to the bonfires, which were manifestations of the first flame. So when the cursed beings, called the undead, would die, they would revive at the bonfires, losing a portion of the link to their dark soul and their individuality in the process. This process was called hollowing, and just like that, the curse of the undead was born. Either way, the lords used all of their resources, as well as sacrificing mankind themselves, to fight the dragons, and they eventually succeed, and the Age of Fire begins. Once the war was won, Gwyn makes good on his promise and gives the Pygmies the Ring City. This gesture was to serve not only as a gift, but a prison for them at world's end. Gwyn tasks his youngest daughter, Filianor, to keep an eye on the Pygmies, use her powerful magic to keep the Dark Soul contained telling her he would come back for her when the time was right. So, after tossing aside mankind, the lords grow their own kingdoms using the power of their lord soul. However, the first flame begins to fade, and with it, the Age of Fire. Gwyn asks the Witch of Isolith, a powerful pyromancer, if she can recreate the first flame. But through her misguided attempts, the witch creates and is eventually consumed by the Chaos Flame creating demons in the process. So, with that solution out the window, Gwyn realizes the need to sacrifice himself in order to kindle the first flame and prolong the Age of Fire. So Gwyn throws himself and his powerful soul into the fire. This in fact does prolong the Age of Fire, but throws the world into an unending cycle, where the fire must be linked for it to continue. With Gwyn gone, his progeny turns to mankind. Since the Dark Soul had been spread around, Fragments of it remained within mankind. These fragments were called humanity. Gwyn's children attempt to prolong the Age of Fire by pushing humanity along, also encouraging mankind to burn these fragments of the bonfire in order to retain their wits and fight back Halloween. A complete mechanism of control was established, full with its religion, to funnel humans into Link in the Fire. The one that would be powerful enough to defeat Gwyn's hollowed form would have a soul powerful enough to Link the Fire, and the ones that couldn't would still burn their humanity at the bonfires, helping to prolong the fire. And so, the legend of the Chosen Undead, the undead champion that was destined to succeed Gwyn, was born. This was of course all a manipulation, but several tried to fulfill this prophecy, obtain the Lord's souls, and link the fire, until eventually an undead arises that manages to overcome all of the challenges and links the fire. However, this fire would once again fade, and a new champion would need to arise in order to keep the dark at bay. During his travels, this chosen undead ends up being transported by a strong magic to the past, to the kingdom of Ulusil, land of ancient sorceries. The denizens of Ulusil disturbed the tomb of one of the primeval pygmies, Manus, and kicked his darkness into overdrive, engulfing Ulusil within the abyss. The chosen undead defeats Manus, whose essence gets broken into shards, and so after he links the fire, the cycle of the linking of the fire continued through countless eras, until the ascension of the kingdom of Dranglaig. Dranglaig was a kingdom ruled by King Vendrick, under the advisement of his brother Aldia. The kingdom was at peace until Vendrick becomes enthralled by a beautiful foreign maiden called Nashandra. Nashandra tells Vendrick of a great threat that is coming to Drang Lake from across the ocean and convinces him to invade before Drang Lake is invaded. Vendrick invades and he finds great powerful giants on the other side of the ocean. Vendrick and his army defeat the giants and he takes a very important artifact from them 
Using the power of this artifact, Ventric creates golems that do his bidding and grows Drang Lake into an unsurpassed kingdom and makes Nashandra his queen. Both Vendrick and Aldia are obsessed with researching the soul. But where Vendrick has a more academic focus, Aldia's approach is more hands-on. In essence, Nashandra wants Vendrick to become the next monarch who may link the fire, as she wants access to the throne of want and the power that may lie therein. Eventually, the kingdom of Drangley comes under siege of the giants seeking vengeance, and after Vendrick learns of Nashandra's betrayal, he decides to sacrifice himself by letting himself go hollow in his tomb, effectively locking Nashandra out of the throne of want, and the kingdom of Drangleic starts to decay. Cursed beings hear that a cure for the curse has been found in Drangleic. One of these bearers of the curse travels Drangleic, seeking powerful souls and even reincarnated lord souls to be able to abate the curse. This cursed one even meets Nashandra, who turns out to be a shard of Manus's essence. The bearer of the curse passes all of Vendrick's trials and eventually is able to reach the throne of Wand. Nashandra attempts to usurp his place, but the bearer of the curse has become much too powerful for her to handle, and vanquishing Nashandra becomes the next monarch, effectively linking the fire. Throughout his adventure, the bearer of the curse gets to meet Aldia, Vendrick's brother. Aldia reveals that Gwen's decision of linking the fire is the first sin and that it has robbed humanity of their destiny, keeping humanity's Age of Dark from ever being achieved. The brothers also find a way to cure the curse. So the cycle continues, but every time the fire was linked, the effect would become less drastic, and more souls would be needed in order to successfully link it. And so, a new custom arose. Whenever a being succeeded in linking the fire, it would be known as a Lord of Cinder, like Gwyn. However, there were some beings that had attempted to link the fire, but had failed, burning themselves in the process. These beings were called the Unkindled. So the fire was continually linked by the Lords of Cinder, but eventually a lord arose who decided not to do it. This lord was Prince Lothric. However, a safeguard had been put into place. A bell of awakening would be tolled, arising previous Lords of Cinder from their graves in order to link the fire once more. Yet, the Lords of Cinder did not want to link the fire again either, and so, with the flame starting to fade, the Bell of Awakening is told once more in order to awake the Unkindled Ones. These recently awakened Unkindled are coaxed into searching after the Lords of Cinder themselves, who refuse to link the fire, and is convinced to bring them back to their thrones, one way or another, and just like that, the Unkindled One starts chasing after them. During his travels, the Unkindled One learns of a painted world, and within this place, he learns that a painter girl there is able to paint worlds. She needs the current painting to burn and a pigment to paint with, but if she's able to paint a world using the Dark Soul of Legend, this world would be an enduring one. So the Unkindled One helps her uncle Gale set the world aflame, and Gale an undead knight of old, sets out on a pilgrimage to obtain the Dark Soul. So after this interlude, the unkindled Ash continues with his duty, and eventually all Lords of Cinder, or at least their ashes, have been gathered at their respective throne, unlocking the way to the Kiln of the First Flame, where the Ashen One can fight an amalgamation of everyone that has ever linked the fire, including Granddaddy Wynne himself. Once the Ashen One has beaten the Soul of Cinder, this amalgamation, he can choose to link the fire or let it fade, or if he has aligned himself with the Hollows of Londor, a faction that only cares about Hollows and bringing the Age of Dark, take the fire within himself and usurp the flame, becoming a Lord of Hollows. There is one more point though. Remember Gale? Well, he had journeyed for the Dark Soul to finish the painting. The Ashen One decides to tag along and ends up at the end of the world where the Ring City, the city that Gwyn gave the Pygmies as a thanks for helping him fight the dragons, lies. Gale indeed finds the Pygmies and consumes the Dark Soul to create the pigment, but it's corrupted by his power, so the Ashen One is forced to defeat Gale to reclaim the pigment. Once he has done this, he brings that pigment to the Painter Girl so that she can paint the most enduring painting of a dark, cold and gentle place, with this painting done, the cycle might finally be broken. So thanks everyone for watching this video. As always, if you liked it, 
please help me by giving it a thumbs up. Also, tell me what you thought about it in the comment section below, and if you like my kind of content, consider subscribing to the channel. This has been Chaps, and I will see you soon.